running out of ideas at this point. The Spaceship Rescue Command more or less feels like a dartboard episode. Some ideas stick pretty good, and others don't. When the crew at a NASA space station comes under attack by a mysterious monster saboteur, the Science Patrol heads off into space to rescue the crew, only to find out that the same saboteur has also destroyed a BM fuse that was vital to the station. If said fuse isn't replaced within 24 hours, the station will explode, killing the entire crew. Now it's up to the patrol to replace the fuse by traversing the mysterious planet Q, where the saboteur resides. In other words, the plot is basically the lawless monster zone in space. Although the NASA crew is part of this episode, they're only really present at the start and end of the episode, leaving characterization to rely primarily on the patrol. The patrol seems alright for the most part of the episode, but for anyone who remembers how I said Arashi's development in Don't Shoot Arashi was more or less focus instead, this is the episode why. He makes the exact same mistake he was called out for against Zaragus, and here he was never called out for it. Granted, this time he pays for it more harshly, but it all goes back to what I said about how any sort of development the characters have on this show are just spur-of-the-moment events that focused on certain events in the episode that they take place in. And here, that sadly justifies this statement. Effects, on the other hand, is on a bit of the upside, sometimes. The set for Planet Q is definitely the highlight of the episode, with Saigo's death being worthy of an honorable mention. But there are some moments where the effects make the planet's atmosphere and terrain look inconsistent. And before anyone says that the time period in which this episode was made in excuses it, the next series proves that workarounds were very possible at the time, so that's a lame excuse to use at this point. As for our Monsters of the Week, Kila is surprisingly entertaining, being the culprit to the space station's sabotage and even stalking the patrol when they're trying to save everyone shows that he's smarter than the average monster, and a beastly one at that, as seen when he no-sells Ultraman's attacks. As for Saigo, he's basically in the episode just to be fodder for Kila to look tough. However, I do wish that both of these monsters would make a return someday. Saigo because I like his design, and Kila because of his personality and prowess, and to pay tribute to someone else. Overall, I'd say this episode's okay. Filler, but okay filler. I'd say give it at least one viewing. Shwaka!